ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce myself. I am Mr. Timothy Flint, schoolmaster in town for an academy for young ladies. At our academy, Mrs. Flint and I teach those subjects so necessary for a young lady to be accomplished in society. Besides the basic reading, writing, and arithmetic, we cover the sciences, public affairs, the fine arts, such as music. One of our students, Miss Eliza Flint, yes, my own daughter, of course, will demonstrate now some of her voice lessons taught at the academy. Eliza? So, goodness. I forgot to condition my voice. Madame would be very cross with me. Uh, pay me no heed, ladies and gentlemen. I shan't be but a moment. as a slave state, since the state of Maine will be free, uh, sort of a compromise. It looks like they're going to put the capital right here in St. Charles. Uh, but did you see Mr. McNair? I did. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he became our first state governor. Well, what sort of ridicule does his wife carry? I didn't see his wife. I don't even know if he has a wife. Oh, good. Is he handsome? He's 45 years old. Oh, well, that's a pity. But they say a life of politics will age a person. Did you go to the wedding? Oh, uh, what wedding? Why, Miss Monroe's wedding to Mr. Gouverneur in March. All the papers were full of it. The president's daughter was married at the White House. Uh, well, was her gown as lovely as they say? How did she wear her hair? The White House in Washington, sister. It's their new name for the president's mansion? No, the British burnt his house, remember? They rebuilt it and it's white. Well, I don't see why she couldn't have been married here. There are plenty of white houses in St. Charles, and I should so have liked to see. Oh, did you know Lieutenant William says there's to be an election this year? Yes, I had heard. I wonder who President Monroe will be running against. They say he'll be unopposed. 
Mr. Unopposed. Well, that's a funny name. He's not likely to win. At any rate, I shall tell Papa to re-elect Monroe, as the president should have a respectable name. Williams is a respectable name, don't you think? But then, Lieutenant Williams is so sensible, of course he would choose a respectable name. Oh, you know Lieutenant Williams, don't you? He's very tall. Yes. And very gallant. Really? And he still has all his teeth. Oh, your teeth, brother! Poor thing! You have to eat hardtack every day on the way home? <laughs> St. Louis is only a day's journey away from here, sister. Really? I thought it was. Anyway, if you were so near this whole time, why did you stay away so long? Well, Mr. Millington wanted me to stay on and of course, get a feel for the place. so occupied with the ladies. I told him I didn't feel absence, a tremendous hurry to get back. You are so very taciturn. And now but Miss Lush, I remember yeah, was why. was constantly asking me when you'd be back. She confided to me that she thought you were prodigiously handsome. Of course, I have noticed that Aunt Louise is odd to taste in silk as well. Aren't you going to so sing? So you shouldn't hold it against, oh, she's a deplorable singer. But then she has such a thick French accent, yeah, she think, can't even oh, speak but through her nose. Uh, Tell Papa oh, that I plan to understand what you say. How can the English girls talk so much with such a Or maybe a I'll just move out west rush. and live amongst the Shoshone. All French girls in school have and a habit of talking face to each other every in French. Just to be spiteful, I suppose. Of course, the I Spanish just bought the whole territory. Since I speak French or two fluently, minutes. and better than they do, I wager not Mrs. that I wager. Mrs. Millington has just a new bonnet. It's just that and they just start speaking in gibberish in order to confuse me. It took me weeks to figure it out. At first, I found it very vexing. You hear them rattling on about absolutely nothing whatsoever. Oh, wait! What was that about a bonnet? Oh, Grandma! 